People say that I talked a lot. Gary, come on now. The glove! He was a nightmare. He had those long arms, he was quick, he was fast, he was tenacious, he was just a great competitor. Oh, that's our ball. They call it the glove so quick. If your head lumpy, I tell you your head lumpy. Oh, he ain't never seen nothing like this in college. I can get heated up when you want me to. Yeah. Gary Payton became renowned as one of the best trash talkers in NBA history by engaging in constant and calculated verbal battles with opponents. His non-stop talking wasn't just random background noise, but a strategic move designed to throw off his opponents. This skill set made his taunting much more than mere words. It was a psychological weapon that undermined the confidence and focus of even the best players on the court. Payton's knack for getting under the skin of key players frequently disrupted their rhythm and made them less effective during games. His trash talk was not just about distracting them, but about establishing dominance and controlling the game. His quick wit and sense of humor not only aggravated his opponents, but also charmed fans, and sometimes even earned the grudging respect of those he targeted. Throughout his career, Payton maintained his reputation as a master trash talker, proving that this aspect of his game was as finely honed as his physical skills on the court. And he's one of the first players who set a new standard for how mental tactics and skills can be used effectively at the same time. His legacy as a master trash talker lives on, influencing current players and how the game is approached psychologically. When done effectively and backed by superior talent, Hayden showed that trash talking isn't just talk. So here are NBA legends and players sharing their funniest trash talk stories of Gary Payton. Enjoy the video, man. Uh, Gary's the only guy in history that can call a play and talk trash at the same time. 25-15, shut your stupid ass up. 25-15, come around the screen, Jordan. shut the hell up, punk. I'm like, what? Can I tell a story, Gary? <laughs> Go ahead, tell it, Shaq. I know it's uh -oh. what you're about to tell. Yeah, I want to hear it. Tell it. So we're with the Lakers, and Gary's older, I'm older. So me and Gary running the pick and roll, and Coach Hubie Brown kept going, going to the screen. He ain't going to hit a shot. He's old. He's washed up. Gary turned around, <laughs> look at the bench. You better shut your ass up, Hubie. <laughs> so like five times in a row, Gary and Hubie going back and forth. In a timeout, Gary told me, after the game, I'm going to whoop his ass. <laughs> and I'm like, Gary, leave that man alone. So after the game, me and Uncle Jerome, we watching Gary, right? So Gary ain't take no shower. He put his stuff on and ran to the bus. Man, we got down there. Gary had Coach Hubie Brown on him. Man, don't you be talking to me like that. We had to pull Gary off Hubie Brown. I was like, come on, man. <laughs> I was like, come on, the Gary. things we do, man. Uh, trash talker. GP. I played with GP. I played against GP. He... He just didn't care. And the crazy thing about GP on the court, he was like that off the court. Like if he saw you in the mall, <laughs> maybe that time I crossed you up, big fella, and I gave you that thing, you went up there, that, and you almost put your arm out of socket. You can't call me, boy, I'm a Hall of Fame. I'm first ballot, boy. I'm first ballot. One of my favorite stories of you is in the fucking playoffs, and I told the story on all the smoke, and people thought I was actually joking. If you go back and look at it, you get the play from George, right? <laughs> Steve Javi says something to you, you take the play. Hey, get him in here. <laughs> Telling George to sub somebody. As he said that, Steve Javi says something. And you go, hey, you see the hand on the hip? Call it, motherfucker. You standing right there. Hey, four up twist. Come down. You get in the free throw line. I'm up here. I'm looking at you as I'm guarding Vin. Come up. Go on out. Hey, shut the fuck up, because somebody yells something at you, cussed out the <laughs> flip like flip calling the play out. Four up twisty coming up thing. I ain't coming out. I'm been back his ass there. And I'm sitting there like, yo, this nigga's talking to, yo, look at this nigga. This nigga's talking to his coach. He took the play. He talking to Steve Jack. My coach said something. The nigga behind the bench. <laughs> Where would you get that from? Where would you get that from? You know what? Being on that playground, KG. Say then I get drafted and I could, and then I have to guard Gary Payton Man. every day. Talk practice. about that, dude. That was GP, G bro. GP, dog. Let me tell you about the first time I met GP. Because Ross, Ross Strickland just told us a story that uh, he said G, uh, he get into the league, he go to the hole, yeah. and GP just flat out just pushed him in the stands. <laughs> <laughs> hey, G, hey GP, what dog. What is wrong with GP, bro? So, you look, we play a pickup. This is before training camp. GP doesn't play. He, he walks in late in some overalls, right? Oh my god! Right, he he is straight. He's straight R and B thug, right? He walks in with some overalls, 
And we playing, and he just wanted to disrupt the whole game. He yells, hey, 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 hold, hold the fuck up. Hold up. <laughs> he looks at me. I'm like, what the hell this dude is doing, bro? And I think at that time, like, you know what I'm saying? He's just yelling, right? And I'm like, what's up? He goes, you tell me. <laughs> I'm like, I'm so lost, dog. I go, what do you mean? He goes, what do you see out here? Though he literally just walks in the gym. He don't see any. I go, what do you see? He go, I see your team tired. I go, yeah, we've been running for like almost two hours. He's like, call timeout. I was like, and pick up? He's like, yeah, call a timeout. I was like, all right, timeout. I'm like, now he's like, everybody get some water. Your team tired, you call timeout, don't you? I'm like, all right, this dude just want to be an asshole. You know what I mean? I've never, I don't play pick up four years in a row with Magic Johnson. We ain't never called no damn timeout. Like, you know what I mean? Like, But it is the truth, though. I mean, that's the thing about it. You call timeout in hey, a pickup game ever? Hey, bro. Have you it, ever called a timeout in a pickup game? Are you gonna let are you gonna let dudes get some water? <laughs> and the rest. Duh. Duh. I, I tell you a story about the 96 Olympic team. We were playing an exhibition game before obviously the game started against a bunch of the up and coming college players. And it was at the Palace of Auburn Hills. And a lot like Dream Team 1 where they got ran out of the gym early against the, you know, Grand Hills and Christian Leitners and those guys, Jamal Mashburn. We kind of took this team a little bit lightly as well in the first half. We were down by 20 points. I remember Gary coming into the locker room and said, guys, this is unacceptable. Now, I know what I'm going to do the start of the second half. I hope you guys follow. He picked up whoever the point guards were, full court for that whole second half, and we ended up winning by like 18 points. Oh, he ain't never seen nothing like this in college. But if it wasn't for his leadership, and again, that defensive tenacity, Tell you, Gary brought it every day, every single day and night. He, he talked a lot of trash, and he, uh, you know, would say, "Hey, you're not going to score. Actually, you're not going to get off a shot today when we do this drill." And I'm like, "It's basketball. I can get a shot off." And uh, he wouldn't let me get a shot off, and uh, I was really hurt. You know, I, you know, he would, you know, talk trash and like, you know, you're going to go home and cry, but. You know, the big thing was, he said, you know, he would never say it at the time, but he wanted to see if I would come back the next day. And I would come back, but I would, you know, my ego and my game was a little wounded, but I would try, you know, go right back at him. And uh, until I got a shot off, and I thought, we'll take baby steps, we'll, we'll get a shot off. I don't care if it goes over the backboard, but we're gonna get one off. And then uh, we'll work on hitting the rim and then go from there and eventually be able to score on him. And, and so he really helped me understand what it took to, uh, to work hard and, and, and get knocked down, but get right back up and come back the next day. Ultimately, the real frustration came in how great a player he was, backing it up. But Gary Payton lets you know what he's gonna do to you and then backs it up. Yeah. There we go. That's legit. He made an impact on the game even as a rookie. So you kind of had to pestle that Seattle game on the calendar and say, okay, uh, I know I'm in for a war here. It, it was definitely Gary Payton. I mean, Gary Payton was, uh, you know, I mean, I just, I remember our point guard when, you know, early on in my career, he, he didn't want to bring the ball up against Gary. <laughs> <laughs> and that's really kind of how I started bringing the ball up and playing point forward. Gary would talk to whoever, talk to refs, players, coaches on other teams, fans. fans. Yeah. He talked nonstop and, uh, and backed it up. So he was the guy that, you know, I think was the ultimate. And, I, it was a little personal. He got a little personal at times with folks. But I mean, I think, you know, that's, that's basketball. You're trying, like you say, you're trying to get an advantage. Yeah. You're trying to get over on somebody. And if you if you back down or you showed that you were scared, oh. then he had you. And here's what the sign is. Are you going to go here, Gil? I played him, right? And I was the glove, right? I loved the glove mm -hmm. growing up. It's the glove, right? Right, that's that, that get in that defense and get that little Oakland smirk. <laughs> right, so I remember getting in the game. <laughs> Bringing the ball down my rookie year, and then we're in we're in um, Seattle, and he gets into that that mode, freaked out. Oh shit, the glove! <laughs> no one's near me. Nothing. Like he's at half court. Pick the ball up. I pick the ball up. I've seen the move. I've seen what he does. 
picked the ball up and just <laughs> tried to pass the shit. Oh, shit, the glove got in his defensive stance and passed it. Mm. And he killed me on offense, right? All these little spins and post-ups, mm -hmm. right? And I remember at halftime, man, I, like, I couldn't wait to get subbed out of the game. Like, that's how bad it was. Sub me the fuck out. Like, whoo, sub, coach, whoo, right? And at halftime, he said, man, you lucky I ain't one of these AI types. I would have scored 50 on the half. And I'm like, yeah, you would have, right? After that, oh, I hate that. Oh, my God. My usage rate is trying to score on one person. Yeah. Yes. By far, by far, he got it the worst. When I start getting into my, when the Miami years, oh, soon as he got in the game, fucking flat. Fry him. I'm not, when, when Gary Payton got in the game, or he tried to guard me, I'm trying to score every right. single time just because of that first year. <laughs> you know? People look at your talking, Gary, they think like, oh, uh, that was just it. He was just talking. But they didn't realize he was taking them mentally out of their game. Right. I was the type of person that used to challenge Gary. I was always in the back of his ear telling him, Michael Jordan, about to get you. You better get ready. <laughs> Michael Jordan over there, he about to, you know, so I think... The one thing that we did for each other, we always challenged each other early on. We took what we did. It wasn't, and some people look at it like we was talking crap, but I think it was more of us being positive and encourage each other because it was a test of what you could do with yourself because we knew we could do better. And so we were playing against them in Europe. I had just got to Indy. This was like 1996. I got traded there in the offseason. And just so happened we were on a European tour and played against Seattle two straight games. And all I know is this. This dude out there cussing at me like he ain't never seen me before in life. Like, I was just with him. Like, I was just with him, Vlad, like 10 hours ago, having drinks. <laughs> this dude, like, you mother... Like, I'm like, okay. It's a strategy. I'm like, got it. He's trying to get you Got it. Try to get you off your game. Got it. And he's a player also. Think about it. So he's a he's a future Hall of Famer. The strength of his game is defense and toughness. He talks a lot of trash and he's willing to fight you. <laughs> right? Right. What you gonna do with that? What are you gonna do? <laughs> so guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. And comment down below what was your favorite trash talk story. So make sure you like, share, subscribe, and until next time.